it is my pleasure to introduce to you our honorary president, Dr. Sam Hertz. about our history. But unfortunately, <clears throat> there are many, many sad stories that we need reminding of. Roman Halter <coughs> witnessed the darkest night in Jewish history, the darkest night. He stirs our memory and inspires us with his courage and ability to transform negativity to positive thinking. He is one of the most outstanding men of our time, and we are most, most honored and pleased to welcome you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Peltz. You forgive me that I sit here. I'm not very good on my legs. Thank you so much for the warm introduction. Also, it's so very good to have a medic, a doctor at hand. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 83 now, and so you never know. <laughs> um, I also like what Dr. Peltz said about the East Coast. When I was gave myself to work at Yad Vashem. I was invited by Teddy Kolek, and he in a relaxed way was talking to a group and they said, what do you think about 
the Shoah. And he said, just a minute, let me swallow this biscuit. And then he said, uh, I'll tell you, there's an old Jewish saying that every human being dies twice, once when he's physically dead and the second time where he's forgotten. And we Jewish people must not forget those who died in the Shoah. He said, I haven't got anything else to say, but bear this in mind. This is our Isko. And it's all right what you said. We Jewish people have to remember. We have to feel the empathy and the memory of those who died. I went three years ago with Fergal Keane, who's making a film with me, to Helmno, called Klumthof, the first extermination camp in Poland. And there was a booklet there and all the people who wrote in the booklet said, please do not forget us, remember us. They said various other things too, but that was quite important. Now I'll start from the beginning. Can you all hear me? Yes. yes. Um, would you rather if I stand up for a little while? Okay. Uh, no, no. Oh no, it's all right. Um, I was born in a town in Poland called Chodec. And Chodec is very easy to describe where it is. If you take a straight line between Poznan, Poznan and Warszawa, Poznan and Warsaw, and take the middle point and go 10 kilometers north, you come to Chodec, you can't miss it. Now that area was annexed very quickly by the Germans, a greater part of Germany, called Wartegau, and Arthur Greiser became the Gauleiter. He was a friend of Himmler and Hitler. Now, I was 12, both my wife and I, my wife is here, we are 83 now, and murder started almost immediately as soon as the SS became in control of the towns and villages, they started murdering Jews because Greiser was reading Hitler's mind and he felt that he should not send the Jewish people from that locality, from that area, anywhere, but start getting rid of them. Now, Chodec, according to the census 1931, had about 500 people, but because the town had a lovely synagogue, had a very learned and compassionate and wise rabbi. And because the chief of police was only a little bit anti-Semitic, and <coughs> it had a shtibel, it had a mikvah, it had a Jewish cemetery. So, the people from other places came, came there. It had a lake, it had undulating hills, forests, and a nice marketplace. So by 1939, when Hitler invaded Poland, there were nearly 800 Jewish people. But because there was a mixed community, there were about 950, under 1,000 German, about 2,200 Poles living in the town and the locality around. And as soon as the SS came in, they selected potential leaders, Polish and Jewish, and shot them. This was very traumatic for us all. And then other murders continued to such an extent. Now, my father had a sawmill, and the men who kept on coming on Sunday to buy timber from him was a German and he was a very intelligent man. He found that it paid him more to make coffins than to do joinery and carpentry in the ordinary way. <coughs> so when he came on Sunday when the place was closed, he used to select the wood, the timbers, and then our man delivered it on Monday and then he played chess with my father. And I used to bring out the coffee and the cakes. 
and that was uh, <coughs> shall I turn towards it? Uh, and that was the extra incentive for him to come for the cakes and the coffee. And <coughs> as soon as the SS came there, he found me a job at the age of 12 to work for the chief SS officer. <coughs> that was a, I don't know what rank he had. He had sort of uh, between major and colonel. But he was in charge of the whole area. Konin, Izbica, Kuyavska, Khodava, all these places there. And he was training the local German people to become SS men. And that happened very quickly. 